Welcome back, and today we'll be discussing Abanica Syndicalism. There's a lot to go through, and we'll probably need to just make this video based on basic information. Cause, well, there's so much to go through, and I could just make a whole video about how the national d direct democracy would work. And, of course, that would be without turning it into authoritarian bureaucracy. Because that kind of contradicts what we are all about. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. So, what's the basic of anarcho-syndicalism? Well, anarcho-syndicalism is, as one could have expected, an anarchistic ideal, which is what this whole video and series is about. Anarcho-syndicalism proposes to follow anarchist principles, as well as, as using syndicalistic methods of reaching the revolution. And something to clarify here is that syndicalism is more of a method of coming to the revolution and how the revolution should be done, more and less of an economical system on how things should work after the revolution. Hence why syndicalists can propose that we should have a form of anarcho-communism or collectivism after the revolution have happened through the means of syndicalistic methods. But that doesn't really describe what anarcho syndicalism is. That's just saying basic things. Well, just like regular syndicalism, anarcho syndicalism proposes that we should use labour unions to force a peaceful revolution to achieve socialism. This idea of using the unions for the revolution of based on the idea that there is power in numbers. In the when the workers unite and start a general strike, which we will get into later, they can force change in the system. We will, as I said, go back to the methods in just a moment, but let's just keep going with the basic idea of anarcho syndicalism. The main difference on anarcho syndicalism and regular traditional syndicalism is that anarcho syndicalism is simply a way of organising and uniting the people to reach the revolution and nothing to do with the after goal or how to govern the society well not govern but how to keep the society in check and making sure that it follows a socialistic pattern regular syndicalists argue for the usage of the same structure in the unions to organise the society after the revolution. This is easily generalised into a few categories which together build this union system. Uh, namely, federationalism, opposing political parties, seeing the general strike as a good revolutionary weapon and replacing the state with a federal economic organisation of society. This is obviously what it differs from anarcho syndicalism as the usage of a federal economic organisation of society is not always what we are striving for. In the meantime, the anarcho syndicalist argues for the usage of an anarchist structured society. Explaining how this would actually work could take up a whole future video, but the basic idea is in a communal autonomy, an actual aka direct democracy that's building up from the bottom up, meaning the masses control what's actually happening. And this could be summarised as an anarchistic federationalism, which is not the system owned as syndicalist, anarcho syndicalist proposes. It is a system that anarcho communists and anarcho collectivists can also argue for if you be want to be able to have larger nations of anarchism. And in the same time as we got these forms of anarcho federationalism, we can have different economical systems in this nation or even better in the international state of a global anarchist philosophy that is leading the world towards a more equal and liberal society as a whole. But in case my talking and rambling about it didn't clarify it enough, 
we got a few quotes here, so let's start with Rudolf Rocker. The organization of onycho-syndicalism is based upon the principle of federalism and free combination from uh, below upwards, putting the right of self-determination of every member above everything else and that recognizing only the organic agreement of all on the basis of like interests and common convictions. This might sound like a lot of big words that's <laughs> really confusing if you're not too used and I'm not claiming I'm very used to reading political philosophy. I'm just used to big words. Um, but what this is basically saying is that like, syndicalistic ideas of anarcho syndicalism is to create a democratic and free society where the power is in the hands of the local communities and that in turn can make a nation or international decisions with the other communities through decision making on a communal level that later goes into a regional level, that later goes into a national level, that later goes into an international level and then and it goes to a global level that's like that I might have a nice picture here trying to make it easier for you to understand Quote of Emily Pogetton. Anarcho syndicalism has a double aim. With tireless persistence, it must pursue betterment of the working class current condition, but without letting themselves become obsessed with the passing concern, the workers should take care to make possible an immediate and essential act of comprehensive emancipation and the expropriation of capital. But this is a little bit of an easier perspective and easily a consumable perspective. There are two aims of anarcho syndicalism to enforce the demands of the producers for the safeguarding and raising of the standard of living, as well as to acquaint the workers with the technical management of production and economical life in general and prepare them to make socioeconomic organisms into their own hands and shape it according to socialist principles. And making it even easier to consume, the idea is that we should <laughs> both make the life easier for the workers, but not forget about the goal of removing capital, of crashing down the capitalist system and going towards an anarcho syndicalistic or anarcho communistic, a libertarian socialist society. Methods. So the last method, but the biggest method that we prioritise is a general strike. And a general strike can be explained as a larger strike where the majority of the workers all refuse to go to work for the bosses and instead go out on the streets and in front of the workplaces to make placards and force a change. Some workplaces are more effective to use as a general strike though, especially the transports like airplanes, boats and trucks. Society can't really function without getting all the goods transported around and if people who are working in the transport industry just decide to strike, well the whole society would go down on its knees because we are in such a need of having our goods transported all around. Other workers that are effective would be medical occupations, firefighters and factory workers. Society need to be able to deal with fires and kill the fires as well as saving lives. And the produce produced in the factories are extremely, extremely vital for society. We are so dependent on the factories being in constant use. Meaning that if these occupations would go out on the streets and strike for a better economical system, well, society wouldn't be able to function. Now, there are, of course, methods they use against it. One big one would be strike breakers, scabs. And this is why it's so crucial that we have the majority of the workers on our side to be able to take up the fight against capital because, well, with the majority we got a monopoly on the actual workers. We got a monopoly on the workforce, meaning scabbing and strike breaking wouldn't really be that much of a deal if we have 60 or even better 70% of the people with us committing a general strike. Well, 
we have a much greater chance of succeeding. But what if a scab? What if a, uh, what is a strife breaker? Well, they let's just like him. Uh, but the companies are willing to hire new people during the strike, uh, usually so they can keep the production up and so the, the company and a big fat cut with the contract can still make the money. They can still make the plus, they can still go plus and they can still get rich off for exploited work. Uh, typically scabs are of the more less fortunate people, the ones that didn't have good employment that just are in drastic need of food, of shelter, of some way of getting it, meaning they are in desperate needs of money. Which in turn means that we could try to fight it with having food in our strikes. We could offer food as we're striking. We could sing. We don't just need to stand there and look frowning and mad. <laughs> we can do a lot more. We can be way more energetic, but we can make it very clear that we want to change. And we can do that through songs. We can do it from giving the less fortunate the food they need, giving out blankets and giving addresses to abandoned homes that no one uses. Stuff like this can be used so, so greatly. General strikes, well, it would function. Uh, we still have the problem with we're fighting more than just, you know, um, the employers. We are also fighting the state, meaning people with the monopoly on the legitimate use of violence. And uh, yeah, you can probably see where that's going. In a general strike, if the state have not already started to crumble due to no one working, well, people we would need to get on our side would be mainly the military, but if possible also the police. Mainly because the state could otherwise use them to attack us and straight up murder us. Just because, you know, we want a bit of a more fair society. But... That is a factor to take into account, meaning that a general strike, while in theory is supposed to be a pacifistic form of revolution, couldn't end up in a bloody revolution, a civil war even. So, it's not promised to be pacifistic, but the main idea is to keep it as pacifistic as possible. If the state doesn't attack us, then we need to be able to defend us. Well, let's take a step back, eh? Let's not talk about the revolution. So we're not there, we don't have 60 or 70% of the workers being willing to stand up and fight oppression yet. We need to do something else and what do the anarcho syndicalists propose? Well, typically direct action. In direct action I've made a whole video about it, which is actually the first video I'm <laughs> recommending this time, but it's up there. Um, and direct action is to simplify it, well not to simplify it, but to put it simply, is taking action directly without a third partner. Third partners are typically authorities or sometimes unions and uh, the state, places, you get it. Now, a union can make direct action, but so can an individual. And easily done direct actions would be wheat pacing, putting up stickers, or strategically blocking buildings, or striking. <laughs> and uh, a form of direct action that we need to make more is talk with people, educate people. This is what I'm doing, this is direct action, you're watching direct action, I'm trying to educate you about anarchist ideas and philosophies. That is direct action. <laughs> is it the most efficient? No, other direct actions needs to be done. Example, putting up stickers, going out, demonstrating, preferably demonstrating without the state's allowance, because then you're not taking a third party into the account, meaning you are actually doing a direct action. Well, in Sweden, we would be able to be shot for that, because we need allowance from the police, and the police don't allow the anarchists to actually demonstrate. And because syndicalism also uses unions a lot. Surprise, surprise, the syndicalism uses unions. 
bothered to why use the unions. Well, personally, I don't think the unions would be the best way of getting a final revolution. I don't think that a revolution should be led by unions. I think it should be more of a natural development as people are just getting too fucking pissed off. But I think that the unions can be used in the capitalistic system, and a lot of anarcho-syndicalists agree with this, to be able to give the workers better conditions and to educate them so they can educate more people. They are a form of educational and support in the capitalist system that will later be replaced with federationalism and a more libertarian socialist society. Now, this is a pretty short video, again, because it's just the basics and I'm totally willing to make another video about this. But until then, I will see you later. Um, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you like my content, and at the end of it all, have a nice day. The sources are in the description.